Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the 12100F once again and seeing how far we can push it before it starts to bottleneck our GPU performance. One thing to understand before we start off is a lot of factors go into your in-game performance, so the CPU GPU bottleneck isn't the only thing that will affect your FPS. That being said, it is still nice to know how far you can upgrade your GPU in a low-end rig if you run into some extra money down the line. We are going to start out by comparing the 3050, 3060, and 3060 Ti together in a few benchmarks. First game on our list is Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. You're running the benchmark on the badass setting, and from my experience, this game is not very CPU intensive. Across the board, we barely break past 40% CPU usage while keeping near 100% GPU usage. So very clearly, we have no bottleneck here. But let's take a look at a more CPU intensive game. When running the Red Dead Redemption 2 benchmark on the highest preset, we see it pretty easily keep up with the 3050 and 3060 in terms of CPU GPU usage. But looking over at the 3060 Ti, especially when it runs through the crowded market, we see a huge CPU spike along with a GPU dip. Now, for the most part, the GPU stays at 97 to 98% usage, but the 1200F is really being pushed to its limits in this game. Moving on, we have Cyberpunk 2077. This benchmark is set to Ultra, and once again, the 3050 and 3060 are being pretty easily handled. But looking back over at the 3060 Ti, things look really great up until we start going through the crowded city and we see a pretty big CPU spike with a 1200F sitting at about 90% usage. That being said, it is still keeping the GPU at a solid 98% usage, which is pretty great. The last benchmark I ran was Doom Eternal. Now, I think I may have mixed up the graphics settings with these cards, but the important thing here is that we are managing close to 100% performance on all three of these cards, even though, as you can see, the CPU performance does climb as the GPU gets better. Now, I do have one more graphics card to look at, and it's our 3070 benchmarks. I wanted to take a closer look at it because I think this is where the 1200F starts to be too weak for the graphical power. Starting with Tiny Tina's Wonderlands again, as usual, the not extremely CPU intensive game has no problem keeping up with our 3070 at 100% usage. Although we can see the CPU usage climbing a bit to keep up. but. When we look back over at our Red Dead Redemption 2 benchmark, once again, we start to see some serious bottleneck as a 1200F frequently struggles to keep the GPU running at even 95%. The CPU usage for almost the entire benchmark stays above 75% and actually at one point dips below 60 FPS. Moving on to Cyberpunk 2077, we see a similar problem as the GPU usage takes some small dips at the beginning of the benchmark, and then once again takes a huge dip as we pan out into the crowded city. I did play some Doom Eternal, but I wasn't really sure what was going on here. The FPS on the 3070 was worse than when I was on the 3050, which makes no sense. But I have a feeling that the settings changed on me as I was swapping cards in and out, which messed with my data. Hard to say if the FPS struggling to save above 50 is a bottleneck problem, or if the graphic settings are just weird. In conclusion, the 12100F is clearly a beast of a budget CPU. I would comfortably upgrade the GPU up to a 3060 Ti, no problem. Even though we started to see a slight bottleneck in Red Dead Redemption 2, it was only in a crowded area at the beginning, and for the rest of the benchmarks, it was flawless. When looking at pushing it to the 3070, I would avoid bringing it that far. Even though I think the 3070 is truly its maximum and it would run most games just fine, for the few instances that it does create a hiccup, it's probably worth looking into getting the 12400F. I hope this video was helpful for anyone looking into starting out with a budget Intel build, and especially for anyone looking to our entry level 12100F build. It should be nice to know that you have a pretty great upgrade path for in the future if you want a GPU with more punch. Thanks to everyone for watching, and we hope to see you guys in another video.